Sheffield United currently sit bottom of the league after conceding 74 goals in 28 games, resulting in only 14 points. They have had recent batterings from Arsenal, Brighton and Aston Villa. Now with this rebuild, I'm going to have five seasons. Can I take Sheffield United from the bottom of the table to potentially European football? It's a big ask, but let's see how we get on. Right, so at the point of taking over Sheffield United, they're not in the best of states at the minute. We've got media prediction of 19th, any free star reputation, so we'll struggle to bring some players in, as should be expected. They are a team that has been very up and down. Prem in the early noughties, then hadn't been up there for a long time until when Chris Wilder first came up, and then they've just got back again after that. After they spent two years in the Premier Division. Finances don't look too bad. 8 million plus. But we've only got 500k to play with. To try and buy some players and bolster this squad out. To try and stay up in the first season. Our current wage spend is only 700k. Which is probably one of the lowest in the league. Along with Luton. That's not looking too bad. So we shouldn't have to worry about that. So this is a squad that we've got to play with. If I was to pick a standout player out. It would probably be Gustavo Hamer, who they've just got from Coventry at the end of this season, at the beginning of the season. Along with him, maybe Cameron Archer, just because of his high finishing stat and composure. But obviously, some of his other mentors, like anticipation, it's a bit low, but the pace is quite good as well. Ben Brinson Diaz in as well. Hopefully, he can help us. He'll probably play striker or left wing. Where he naturally plays i think the only way to progress with this team is we are probably gonna have to sell a few players and then buy some better players or maybe younger players to develop if we do go down to come back up and they'll be better by the time we are back so behind the scenes i'm gonna quickly work the transfer window see what i can do and try and build the best team i can to possibly stay up we'll see you at the end of the transfer window in season one right so we've come back at the end of the transfer window Currently 12, 3 points on the board after 3 games. As we can see we won 2-0 against Crystal Palace away from home. That's a great result. And then the next 2 results is a 1-0 loss to Arsenal and a 1-0 loss to Man United. Which, in this first season, I'm not going to absolutely hate on because that's not terrible results. I know they are losses but they're not the worst losses in the world. Losing to Rob in the cup isn't the best but obviously... It's probably better if we go out the cup early just to focus on the league. So with the transfer, I managed to sell some clauses that uh, Sheffield United already had and lower the bonuses for the season. And I managed to get Wilfred Nonto in. Obviously, Wilfred Nonto is a good young signing. Signed for 18 million and now he's already gone up to 62 to 88 million. He does have a, the two release clauses in his contract. Obviously, if we get relegated, 42 and a half million. Still a massive profit. And then... 85 million a minimum release clause if anyone wants to put that in if someone does obviously i use that money to build a better squad overall so i'm not too bothered about that being in there this is a tactic that we're going with just want it to be quite attacking with that uh segundo Falante as well and hopefully be quite defensively strong which actually so far for the team that we are we've only conceded two in three games which isn't too bad. If we pick without restriction our best 11, this is the team that shows. Obviously we wouldn't have him in there because he's injured. So if we do a quick pick instead, he will put Jack Robinson in there instead. So yeah, that's the team that we've got to play with so far. I'm gonna to simulate to the end of the season and hopefully we can stay away from relegation. Right, so we're at the end of season one now. And we've actually managed to stay up. We've got the magical 40 point mark. In the first season that's amazing for Sheffield United. We've finished 11th. Luton are up there with us as well with 46 points. Which is amazing by them. The three teams that have gone down is Burnley which are expected. Forest and Bournemouth as well on 19 points. Which is a bit of a, bit of a surprise. Uh, considering they've got some decent players there with them. Due to this quite high finish, we've actually got a 43.5 million uh, budget for next season, which will massively help improve the squad. Looking at the squad now, 
our highest top goal scorer was actually our uh, defensive mid, who's probably that Segundo Volante. Uh, Sousa was playing there, and then we've got Cameron Archer with nine, who's playing up top. Average rating is extremely, extremely low, but did the job. We stayed up. My other striker, Rian Brewster, not very high either. The highest average rating in our squad was Gustavo Hamer, who actually played quite well. Seven assists is quite good with one goal. Nonto didn't too, do too bad, got six and seven. Average rating isn't great, but... Looking at the other two competitions, we actually got knocked out by Derby County, so League One, and Rotherham United, who have probably just been relegated, or they've actually stayed up, but in real life, who are bound for relegation already, bottom of the championship. So, not great in the cup competitions, but in the Premier League, we've managed to stay up, and let's just improve the team for next season. So, I'm going to have a quick play around in the transfer market. And then I'll see you at the end of the transfer window set up for season two. So we've come back after the transfer window. And so far we've got four points out of four games, which is quite good. Let's see the fixtures that we've played. Uh, lost one nil away to Wolves. It's, in... it's not the best, not the worst. Um, one nil at home to Crystal Palace. With a late, late, very, very late winner. Uh, we then drew 2-2 away to Newcastle, which is a pretty good... Pretty good result. Won in the Carabao Cup 1-0 with a late winner again. And then lost 3-0 at home to Man City, which is going to happen. The first signing we've made is Morgan Gibbs-White. And we've managed to sign him at a decent price as uh, Notts Forest got relegated. Signed him for 25 million. So far he's played okay. He's got one assist. Probably needs a little bit of time to settle in, but he will, he will get better. Next we signed Sardella, who's a very versatile defender, can play left back, right back and centre back, very capable at all. His main appearances have been coming off the bench and we brought him in for uh, 12.5 million which is a pretty good price. Next we brought in Sedilia as well, who similar name to the last guy, Sedilia Sardilia. Uh, he's actually scored a goal already, got one goal in his four games that he's played and we got him in for 13 million. Again, it's a pretty good price for a young player that he is. We've also brought in Dominic Solanke, who's in real life is coming off probably the best season he's ever had. Got him in for 25.5 million. Not a bad price. Just because Bournemouth got relegated. And from another relegated team as well, Nicholas Dominguez. Brought him in for 24 million. Even though Forrest only just. Forrest made a decent profit on him, but so far he hasn't played very well. Which I hope changes. Because he has got quite good stats. I know his marking isn't great, but it's passing, tackling, vision, all of that. Mental is very well rounded. Hopefully he can be quite a successful signing. Obviously, a lot of the team has changed, so it'll need a bit of time for them all to integrate in together. We've also got Joshua uh, Vaganoman who's come in. He can play both fullbacks. That's a very good ability. Got him in for 7.5 million. Again, decent price. His average rating is not good at the minute, but obviously we've played, we've not played very well in the first four games. And obviously the last one we brought in is Rooney Bargy, who is one definitely for the future, but he'll probably play every single game at the minute anyway, because we haven't really got anyone else that can play there. He's played four games so far, not played amazing again but hopefully as they gel as they grow together they'll all start playing a little bit better so when we pick the best 11 this is what comes up it's actually got some pretty good names in there i don't mind it just need to be a bit more consistent hopefully just the young players that they are will grow because we have got quite a lot of young players in here i think realistically if we can beat the points total that we got last season it will be a success hopefully we can have a bit of a, a cup run but most likely get knocked out quite early as you can see we've got liverpool in the carabao cup next so we'll probably lose that that's it for now and we'll see you at the end of season two right so we've come back at the end of season two and as you can see slight improvement 
We've got 53 points, only three points behind um, eighth, which is the Conference League. So European football is just within touch. We actually finished with a positive goal difference as well, which is a major improvement on last year. Taking a look at the other competitions, we actually made it to the FA Cup semi-final. So it's a Wembley trip, but we were knocked out to by Nottingham Forest, who, if I remember correct, correctly, yeah, they were relegated last season. So that is quite disappointing. We could have had a final. They only lost 1-0 to Chelsea as well. So maybe I could have got a win there. And potentially got Champions League. Uh, not Champions League. Europa League football. So lost on extra time. In extra time. Oh, and they scored in the 92nd minute as well to take it to extra time. That's disappointing. We were knocked out in the third round by Liverpool in the Carabao Cup. Which... I did expect. Looking at the stats for the team for the season, um, Cameron Archer got 22 goals, which is pretty good in 40 games. Two assists, average rating's okay. We still haven't got any green ones yet. Sousa was close with 30 games. Nonto and Morgan's Gibbs White as well, also close. I'm actually very surprised at how many little games Solanke played. Only three goals as well, so... Maybe, I don't know, considering he wants to leave, it's, he could actually leave in the summer, which ideally wouldn't want, but Cameron Archer just obviously seems to be playing quite good. And he is a team leader now as well. And obviously his stats as well are pretty good. 17 finishing, 16 composure, 16 off the ball. So it's actually, I don't know, 19 goals in the Premier League as well. So you can't really complain. Looking at the finances, obviously the overall balance at the minute is quite quite healthy quite healthy uh, and that has given us 63 and a half million to play with for next season and a little bit of room in the wage budget will probably have to adjust that but um yeah that's definitely enough to improve the team hopefully we can improve it and maybe break into the european spots next season we'll see but gonna go away go into the transfer window spend all that cash and we'll see you at the end of the transfer window at the start of season three right so we'll come back at the start of season three and i think it's fair to say we've had quite a big big transfer window first we'll look at the players that we got out i had to sell ahmed hozik because he only had one year left on his contract and he just wouldn't um speak to me about a new contract so i had to get rid of him 30 million we got for him which is Massive profit from what we bought him for. Also let go of Tom Davis as well, just because he weren't up to the standard and he wasn't really playing. Got 10 million for him. Jaden Bogle's gone, only 1 million. It's just he wasn't anywhere near the standard. Traore as well has gone for nearly 6 million. A bit more money uh, recuperated. Sousa as well, who's been playing a lot, is actually gone out on loan, but with a mandatory fee. I believe it's... 24 million altogether and we actually also managed to get 10 million from Calvert-Lewin because he transferred to Arsenal for 54 million so the first signing Lucas Torreira very good defensive mid four star is rated very highly immediate description of elite midfielder which is the first elite player I think we've got in the squad his mentals are very very good physicals as well except from pace and strength are a bit low but the others are obviously quite good Tackling and marking is very good for the job I want him to do. We also brought in Marco Kenner to obviously give a bit of squad depth for that defensive mid role. That is due to obviously the players that left. We just didn't have enough defensive mids there. Got him in for 30 million. Next in was Delot, who was on the transfer list. Obviously, we know a lot about Delot. He's a, he's a good player. Very well-rounded. Got him in for 30 million again. Next, we've got one Bernat in on a free. It's a good free signing. Helps up with the with the squad depth. Also, we've got him Maxine LaCroix, who he was the replacement for uh Ahmed Hozik. And yeah, obviously we know he's quite pacey, good height, wins a lot of headers. Uh, he's got good rounded stats. And we got him in for 25 million, which is obviously sold uh Ahmed Hozik for 30 bought him in for 25 so gained 5 million there and the last signing is probably the strangest signing i've ever made we've got lamin yamal in obviously barcelona wonder kid he is probably one of the best wonder kids on the game 
managed to get him in because he wanted to leave Barcelona because he weren't playing enough. And he obviously wanted to just come to the Mighty Blades. His stats already at the age of 18. Obviously, greens all over. He is sensational. Uh, so far in the league, he's played three games and got three goals. So, and his average rating is skyrocketing. He's doing very well. So far in the Premier League, we've actually done quite well. We've got a away win at Newcastle, which is massive. That's a big, big win for a team like us if we want to start pushing for them top eight positions uh one nil lost to chelsea didn't really play very well but it happens uh obviously an easy win at home to carlisle in the cup and then three one away to aston villa as well which is another great great win so far this has us ninth in the league obviously two wins out of three can't really complain with that i have slightly changed the formation for this season i've uh, changed the ball winning midfielder to a halfback just to help this defensive solidity and we've changed the cam to a second striker and put it over towards the right and the striker over towards the left just so it's like a asymmetric 424 like it says up there hopefully this can help penetrate obviously these spaces leave gaps for this runner to go in who's most likely probably gibbs white or another signing we made was uh fagundo torres probably could be him going in there so when we pick best 11 without restriction this is the team that shows crazy the quality we've got in the team now compared to the team that we started with just wanted to have a quick look at the season preview as well which we haven't checked before and it's actually got us in at 11th now which is obviously it shows the improvement we've had to the team hopefully this season we can kick on into these top eight spaces because european football would be nice to get and it obviously brings in a lot more money and hopefully in the cup competitions we can actually i know we got to the semi-final of the fa cup last season but maybe we could get into a final and maybe win a cup anyway that's it for the start of season three really looking forward to this season as the squad at the minute is quite impressive i'm looking forward to see how they grow how they perform especially uh yamal He's done amazingly so far already. So yeah, I'm going to sim to the end of the season now, and then we'll see you at the end of season three. Right, so we're coming at the end of season three. Finished seventh. Massive. That is good, that is good. Only four points off the top four as well. Major improvement. Again, points tally's gone up again. We've gone from 40 to 53, now to 67. Scoring 70 goals overall in the league as well. That is the fourth highest in the league. And we've qualified for the uh, Conference League as well. As it looks like Crystal Palace and West Ham have won some sort of competition to get into the Europa League. Looking at the stats for the players over the season. Uh, Fagundo Torres has actually got 16 goals. He's our highest top goal scorer. Followed by uh, Yamal, who's got 15 and 10. Obviously with a great average rating as well. Uh, Morgan Gibbs-White as well probably shared that role with uh, Torres. He's got 13 and 9. And then Rooney Bardi has got 16 assists as well as on with uh, Vaganoman, who's got 11 assists. Cameron Archer seemed to have dropped off a little bit. Only 8 goals. Might have to look at bringing in a new striker. And Dominic Slanky ain't even getting played. And his value has dropped all the way down to 8 million. So... That was an unsuccessful signing, and I'll probably look to move him on. In the other cup competitions, again, we got knocked out by Nottingham Forest, who is still in the championship in the FA Cup. Lost on pens again, and then we were knocked out in the Carabao Cup by Arsenal in the fourth round. Going into the next season, we've got 31.7 million. It's a decrease, but obviously I did spend a lot of money last season, so... Hopefully, the only thing I really want to look at improving is the striker because we need more goals from our striker. Major improvement this season. Hopefully, we can carry it on into season four. And maybe let's see how we can do with uh, European football as well. See if that'll impact our league uh, positions or hopefully it'll just kick us on. Maybe we could even win it because it is the conference league. Might be one of the better teams in there. And then get into the Europa League for season five. Anyway, that's it for this season. So we'll see you at the start of season four. Right, so we'll come back at the end of the transfer window for season four. Big transfer window. A lot of players wouldn't sign new contracts, so essentially they wanted to leave. When bids were coming in from, they were just becoming unhappy. So when them bids, bids did come in, I just decided to accept them. So we have sold Tristy, 
He was a backup centre back. Gone out for 20 million. Dominic Solanke obviously didn't work out. Got 12.5 million back. Obviously lost some money on him, but saving on the wages because he was earning quite a bit. Cameron Archer has gone out for quite a big price, 40 million. It's just after last season he didn't get too many goals, didn't play too great, so 40 million for him is a good good price to get. Nonto's gone out on loan because he wanted to play more time and he just didn't really develop at all. And then Sardili has gone out as well. He was getting offers from Champions League clubs and he had a, a minimum release clause anyway for 29 million, so it's just automatically accepted. Also, Sedilia went out as well, 20 million to Toulouse. A little bit of a profit on him. Yeah, he didn't really grow too well and we had better players at the time. So on the ins, we had a lot of defenders to replace and we brought in uh, Kevin Danzo, big strong centre back, does the job got some European experience as well playing for uh, Lens. Callum Doyle, young English, he's a good ball playing centre back as well and is quite versatile, can play left back as well. Then brought in Tammy Abraham as a just a backup striker because I believe with his height and his pace he would actually be better than Cameron Archer and he was a decent price, 16 million. Now my new starting striker, I'm gonna go with Wahe, Wahai, Wahi, I don't know, Eli, Ely, Ely, we call him Ely, uh, brought him in, got good finishing, good composure, good pace, everything for an advance forward that you want, he has got, hopefully he can start well, he hasn't, he hasn't got a goal just yet, but we haven't started great this season, got a new goalkeeper, Atubolu as well from Leverkusen and he has only just joined from Freiburg the season before he's got some very good stats so I just compared him to the keeper that we had before and he he looked loads better overall Luke Thomas is a backup left back to replace Bernat who retired Van Heck as well um Brighton got relegated and he looked like a very good centre back looks very strong mentals are very good greens all there tackling obviously very good and not too much of a bad price. It fit, I know 50 million is quite a lot, but realistically, it's not a terrible price. And then we brought in Missouri as well for the uh, backup right back or rotating with uh, Delot. And then Serge Gnabry as well, cheap price. He's only on 26k a week. Uh, it's just a bit of experience and quality to bring into the side. And added bonus he is homegrown so it helps with the registration rules so yeah we haven't started great so far two losses to begin with in the league uh that one at home to forest is very disappointing considering if we check the stats we absolutely bombarded on but just couldn't finish uh easily through in the conference league qualifying round <laughs> draw at home to Brentford as well and then easily for in the second round of the Carabao Cup tactics saying staying the same after how well we did last season and if we pick without restriction this is the team that it shows us obviously Fagan Omen's out injured at the minute but I would like to think this is a strong team hopefully we'll kick on a bit more from how we've been playing obviously uh, Yamal's been playing well but most of them are in the conference league games yeah the team looks strong at the minute hopefully we can turn around our poor start and kick on just want another improvement so maybe we can hit the 70 mark hopefully win the conference league and then get into the europa league for next season as well so yeah that's it for the start of season four uh we're gonna simulate to the end now and when we get there we'll check back in Right, so we come back at the end of Season 4, and again, we finished 7th. It's hard to break into that top 6 with all these great teams here. Unfortunately, we have got a points decrease, but I think that could be due to uh, getting further in other competitions. Obviously, more players would have been tired. So looking at them competitions, unfortunately, we couldn't 
win the Conference League. We lost to Atalanta in the semi-final, and then they went on to win it against Standard Liège, which I probably would have hoped to win that game. Yeah, unfortunately, we just couldn't get past them. Who did we beat along the way? We beat Benfica, 6-3 on aggregate, which is probably a better team. And Luzan from Switzerland beat them very convincingly, 8-1. Looking at the league phase, I won 5 and drew 1, and obviously Benfica won all 6 and then I knocked them out. FA Cup, 4th round by Chelsea, can't help it, sometimes it's look at the draw, and runner up in the Carabao as well. <laughs> Nearly got a domestic cup in for Sheffield United, who did we lose to? Arsenal 2-0, that's a tough one. So looking at the stats for everyone this season... Uh, Yamal had a great season, 19 goals, 24 assists, amazing average rating. Uh, Fagundo Torres as well had a great season, and also Rooney Bardi, so that sort of freeing the attacking midfield uh, position along with Morgan Gibbs-White. Ely had a great season as well, 23 goals, hopefully next season get a bit more with a bit more uh, progression. So obviously in the final season we'll have the Conference League to play for again. If we can win that, I think for Sheffield United, considering where they were in Season 1, it will be a massive success. The aim for me is to win either a cup competition or break into the top four. If either of them are done, I would say this is a good rebuild, really good rebuild. We're going to move on to the transfer window now, so we'll see you at the start of Season 5. Right, so we've come back at the start of Season 5, and we've actually had quite a bit of a... Um, quiet transfer window by my standards so uh brought in harvey elliott not a bad price just on the transfer list and uh onana not a bad price as well just for that uh, segundo Falante role and then harvey elliott as backup he's very versatile as you can see play all over the midfield yeah, and then onana can play center mid and dm so yeah, we've spent 70 million in, but we've actually recuperated 101 million with uh, Nonto Torreira going to uh, Al Halil, 60 million. Gnabry wanted out, so had to sell him. So far, it's been a bit rocky. Obviously, it started well with three wins and then got absolutely battered away at the Emirates. Then won again in the second leg for that, uh, for the Conference League, and then went to Man, well, had Man City at home and unfortunately lost 3-2. And we're also already at the Carabao Cup, lost on pens to Coventry, which is not good. Gonna try a little bit, something different for the, the last season, just to mix it up. Gone to a 4-2-4, four, four, a support role of the target forward, just so he could play to these three around him. Deep line playmaker on defense, gone for an inverted full back at left back, on, obviously on defend, and then a, uh, the wing back on the right back being on attack so if we pick best 11 without restriction this is a team that shows obviously you've got a couple of injuries out at the minute um tammy abraham out for a little bit and then a uh, rudy Bajri out for r roughly the same time but this is the team that i'd pick at the minute and hopefully ideally i know already at the carabao cup if we could win the conference league or the fa cup and finish well just get qualified for the Europa League I think that would be a good point for the last season it hasn't gone too well but obviously at this point for Sheffield United this is a massive success because they are truly in the gutter in real life so yeah gonna simulate to the end of the season and let's just see how we get on hopefully uh, we'll get some success but if not you know it was a fun ride, but yeah, we'll see you at the end of season five. So we've come back at the end of season five, the final season, and uh, I'm very, very, very happy with it. We have actually finished fifth, which is the highest finish we've finished so far. Um, just above Newcastle, one point only slightly off the top four but if we look at the league table we've actually qualified for the champions league due to uh, the coefficiency so that's massive 
massive massive massive so we know how we've done in the league let's see how we've done in the other competitions and it's a massive success we've won the fa cup we've won the conference league we got knocked out by Coventry in the carabao cup <laughs> not ideal but it's, it's one of them just beat wolves in the fa cup got to the semi-final themselves in real life so they're a good team in the conference league we beat olympic leon 1-0 in the final so we've gone one step further than we did last season had shamrock rovers in the semi-final beat them convincingly 8-4 sorry 8-1 arunka from portugal bruno larg is their manager beat them 9-1 6-0 at their ground and in the fa cup we beat liverpool in the final 4-2 beat arsenal on penalties beat chelsea on penalties so that is a place in the Champions League and two trophies to finish off the rebuild. That is fantastic. If only there was a way I could play more on this save because it's just, just about to get interesting. Looking at the squad for the season, Ely had a great season, 32 and 14 assists with a great average rating. Uh, Yamal, 22 and 21 at the age of 20. Honestly, he's a fantastic player. He's now considered a five-star player. He's been getting uh, player, young player of the year every year. He's fantastic, honestly. Tammy Abraham had a great season. So, obviously, going to the two up front had a quite a big effect on the team. Uh, Torres, again, another great season. Where did he mainly play? He played up front and left wing. He even had a game at target forward. Yeah, major improvement this season. Team's just doing a lot better. It's good to see. So, after making this tremendous progress... Finishing top five to get Champions League and winning our first two trophies. Is this the end of the rebuild? I personally would like to play it more, but it's up to you. If you want me to carry on and do another five years in this rebuild, make sure you like this video. If we hit 20 likes, not a lot, but if we hit 20 likes, I will do another five uh, years with Sheffield United and if you manage to get to the end of the video at this point leave in the comments a team that you want to see me rebuild next that's all for this video and I'll catch you in the next one